What's up, guys, and welcome to One Realm. This episode is going to be all about Mortal Kombat 2. I'm here with Thomas. What's up, guys? And if you haven't checked it out, definitely go check out uh, the last episode, which was all about Mortal Kombat 1. This is a series going from MK1 all the way to MKX in the buildup of, of course, MK11. Uh, MK, MK2. All right, as we mentioned in the last one, MK2 is where it really all started, like where it, where it really started to build into something huge. Um, I guess when it comes to Mortal Kombat 2... It's Mortal Kombat 1, but with so much expansion in every aspect of the game. Mm -hmm. And it really was, I guess you could say, the perfect sequel. And the way that they managed to do that in such a short amount of time, because it came out, if I'm not mistaken, a year afterwards. So if I'm going to do so much in such a short amount of time, it really was incredible. But what was the first thing that's, that, that was actually not, not what was, but what is the first thing that pops in your mind when you think Mortal Kombat 2? Our world. And then, like, the birth of my favorite characters, which, if you, if you haven't noticed by right now, it's Prince Katana. And if you want to know my second favorite character, um, oh, no, I can say go hand in hand, Katana and Melina. Well, they came around, I was like, wow. Yeah, that's, but, kind, of, that's, kind, of, that's kind of the um, biggest thing I think about MK2 is the fact that there's so many great characters. Yeah, more characters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's still, um, gameplay-wise, like we said, it's still uh, a bunch of bad, bad, um, button mashing. I don't know what the heck I was trying to say. <laughs> but it's literally just who can hit this button more and who can upgrade faster. Or who can, but, in my case, jump in, jump out fastest. Which I can do none of those, apparently, because I just... I'm fighting right now. First of all, I want you to pick this time, because... Um, we're probably not gonna finish it. I'm not gonna finish this tower with this within this episode. So who you try to fight with? Baraka, since Baraka looks so badass in MK11. I hate you. Okay. You hate Baraka? No, I just I never been really a fan of Baraka, so hmm. I guess you give me a chance to actually appreciate him. All right. Hmm. We're coming out. But yeah, but let's see. I'm looking, I'm looking at the move list first. I'm not doing this. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, Mortal Kombat 2, the character-wise, I would say that that's probably the biggest jump, is the amount of characters that are in there, how awesome they are, and how they're, they still manage to make them all so unique, you know what I mean, the, the fact yeah. that all of them have, of course all the characters that are returning, they all have the stories, they all progress and all that stuff, but there's such a deep amount of lore in MK2 and of course expanding MK3, etc. It really is impressive that in such a short amount of time, they managed to do so much. And it just kind of shows that they had a great idea in mind. They had a great story in mind for the future and they just kind of ran with it. And it really did become a, a huge phenomenon. And, you know, as you mentioned, like, let's see, I have the, the character list right here. Let me just uh, pull it up real fast. The MK2 roster, like, I mean, MK1, you said your favorite character was Sonya, correct? MK1? Yeah. No, I said Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero, yeah. I was getting my bad. Uh, where's the damn list? Okay. Uh, Jade, Katana, Melina, Noob, Cybot, Reptile, Scorpion, Smoke, Sub-Zero. There's also, I think there's a few missing there. The it sounds like it. Say again? Yeah. Hold on, let me find the full roster. Hmm. I mean, I'm I am looking at the game. I couldn't yeah. tell you the roster myself. Yeah, it's true, but I I don't know. I, I have a Wikipedia open right now, but it seems like there's some missing. Yeah. Okay. Definitely seems like there's. Sounds some like missing. it. I think that might, might have been all the new characters. But I even mean, think like you're missing some. Maybe, but what the hell? Anyway, so yeah, MK2. As I pull up the roster, like Jade and and Katana, are obviously the two that really stick out for you. But if you had to pick, you know, a character that over time, you, I guess Baraka kind of comes to mind for me, but who was your, who was the character that when you first saw them, they have really jumped to you, like, this is the character I want to... Sub-Zero still. Sub-Zero still? Yeah. Like I said, Sub-Zero and Liu Kang will all be my favorite characters in general. And I, I love Katana, don't get me wrong, but as an OGs or and just in general, like Sub-Zero has I could tell because of her story, okay? Like that. 
and but like we're all, like Sub Zero. Oh, I, hey! First of all, I actually completed two fights on this game for the first time ever. That's actually big news because if you guys don't know, uh, this is like this is the game that gives him the most issues. This is the very first time yeah. I've ever passed two fights in the in Mortal Kombat 2, so he definitely deserves a big round of yeah. applause. Without no one else's help, too. <laughs> no cheating. No. Yeah, I'm on a streak right now. I have two wins in a row. Yeah, and you were also mentioning in the, in the last video that you've you you've completed you've done fatalities in how many games? Like three. So you take Shaolin monks. Shaolin monks. Um, nine Armageddon. X and now MK1, so four, I guess. Okay. If I count that right. Moving on up in the world, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So I brought up the, but, the character list on on MK2 uh, MK2's uh, you know Mortal Kombat wiki. So the characters were the new characters were Baraka, Jax, Katana, mm -hmm. Kung Lao, Melina, and Sub Zero. Of course, we're talking about uh, Kai Lang, of course, which is Wiley. definitely a different yeah, yeah a different character over Bihan. And the returning characters were Johnny Cage, Liu Kang, Scorpion, Shang Tsung, Raiden, and Reptile. Alongside non-playable characters Jade, Smoke, Noob Saibot, Kintaro, and Shao Kahn, with cameo appearances of Kano, Sonya, Goro, Blaze, and Hornbuckle, which is the the weird, you know, it, it's just the guy that you can see in the background fighting, fighting, uh, fighting Blaze, but really, it's just kind of a little guy that there. There's really no story to him, nothing. And then of course there are rumored characters to be Scarlet, Red Robin, Hornbuckle once again, Blaze. And Emerald, which was just a, uh, a green palette swap of Molina. So, as you can see, you know, so many characters that were introduced in this game have gone on to become mainstays of the roster, have become iconic characters, and just kind of goes to show that they were on an incredible run of create uh, of just creating amazing characters, amazing stories, and really amazing games. Um, like I was saying, like the character that first sticked out to me is Baraka for sure. Uh, I, I absolutely love. I, it's kind of a love-hate relationship for me with Baraka because I love his look. I know that's kind of weird but because he's just a dark cotton, but I love the way he looks. I love the blades. I love his brutality, all that stuff. But it's just unfortunate that in almost every single game, they kind of just make him this guy who gets his ass beat for the most part. He's just kind of there. And I'm hoping that with MK11, with him looking so badass and him actually having his own arena and stuff like that, they may they may change that and they may make him a, ter a character that can finally get the respect he deserves. But... As, of course, you were saying, Sub-Zero is the guy that comes into your mind, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, I want, I want to start talking with Sub-Zero in a little bit, but first of all, I'm on Fight 5, guys. This is really big. <laughs> like, five fights without losing. Well, I lost the first time, first match against Raiden, but with the character I don't like either. I don't really care for Barack, like you heard me say. I, mean, I think Barack is but, kind of a cheeser in the game, though. He's pretty He's pretty good, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm not... I'll be a liar for I'm not cheating this entire game. I'm just doing the chop chop right now. But that's thing, I never gave him the time of day because of anything like his look, really. Huh. And I think this is always the stakes with me. I have to like how you look for me to want to play you. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. Like, like back in when Luke Cage became a zombie, I didn't play with him at all in MK Deception. Oh, weird, because, you know, Liu Kang, when he turns into a zombie, that kind of made me like him more. I was never oh, really I a, still... big fan, a big fan of, of Liu Kang until he kind of became a zombie. Oh, no, no, I still think it's cool, but I just wasn't that big of a fan. Mm -hmm. I, I just lost guys, so my cap is four fights in a row Well, I mean, right now. that's not too bad at all, considering MK2 is, which I guess we can kind of use that to lead into the gameplay perspective. MK2, I think, is a lot harder than MK1. Of course, MK1 was... Really, really, really basic. MK2 is still basic, but it does add a few things here and there, including al different allergies and stuff like that. But gameplay wise, I think MK2 is easily the hardest game in the series. And not in the series, but in the arcade games. Not even close. And probably even over the series now that I think about it, really. Well, if this is the hardest one in the series, we're going to have trouble with MK11, because that's how everyone's comparing it. Well, I will say it's like MK9 and MK2 together, mm -hmm. but update version, we're mostly like an update version of MK2. Which I'm actually... I'm looking forward to, but... 
because I've made this, I've said this quite a few times in a few videos, that I think MK2 is definitely, uh, probably for me, it's number three. It's the third best MK, the third best game in the series. If I'm looking for, for nostalgia, this is definitely 100% the number one, because MK1 was great, but MK2 had so many more characters, the gameplay was more fluid. Overall, I just, I enjoyed it a lot more. But I think that overall, it's definitely, I think behind Deception, because it had Conquest Mode, it had so much content. And behind MK9, which was very similar, had a lot of content, this is definitely the number three game, in my opinion. So for me to give it that kind of praise, you know, among, beating off, well, that's, that's, that, that, that didn't come out right, <laughs> beating so many different, you know, MK games that are, you know, just awesome, that really does kind of show how good MK2 is, in my opinion. From a, from a story perspective, all right, going forward from MK1, and of course, you're kind of the story guy of this show, what do you think... I'm asking two, two questions here, all about story. Number one, which character from MK1 do you think had a more interesting story arc? You know, from MK1 to MK2, which wh whose character, whose story was a bit more interesting moving forward from MK1 to MK2, and who, wh which character, which new character story kind of appeals to you the most? Of course, we know Katana, but yeah, kinda, so kinda, 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 out, yeah, kind of go into context about in, into detail about why. Okay. So that's the thing. I think I always say it's Katana, but no one ever knows why. Mm -hmm. If they do, maybe. Yeah. But um, first of all, from the from the new, from the old game to the from one to two, I think Johnny Cage actually had an interesting story, and he's kind of like the pillar of kind of what everything that like kind of tipped off, and brings in um, the more of the realistic version of Mortal Kombat. So. On that note, I mean like this. Um, so the island's crumbling, and um, crap. Hey, yeah, I'm gonna pause this because right now I keep getting my butt kicked, and I'm hungry and thirsty. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so when I tell my story, I have to like make sure I get everything right. But the island's destroying, and they, he gets he gets off. He then goes to find Jax, somebody who's in special, in special forces. And tell him, hey, we need, I need your help trying to go save the screw up man on this island. Which is obviously Sonya. And he doesn't believe him at all until Rain comes down and tells him probably everything he says is right and I need both of you actually to come help. So it gives you that realistic version too. I know a lot of people give um, Johnny Cage crap because he's like, oh, he's just a joke character. So I'm like, yes, he is. But he's also, he's the closest thing you can connect with. We can connect to a monk, because how many of us are actually willing to do what they do on a regular basis? Not me. We have no special, power. we have no special powers, so that pretty much makes most of the people in this game. The only people we can actually slightly see ourselves in is the movie star and the military. And by this game, at least. Mm-hmm. So incorporating that kind of helped build up stuff you need later, like oh, the Outworld uh, investigation thing. A lot of things went into Johnny Cage on this one, so I'll give him that. And he does not much afterwards, but it does bring, bring me think of that. Now... So just so we have a quick recap, because I'm not sure, uh, I'm will talk about Sub Zero and Katana both, because that's like tied for me. But um, what happened was, um, so after the end of the tournament, Scorpion kills Sub Zero, which is devastating. But then kind of throws everyone off, like, hey, if Sub Zero's dead, who's this guy? And I'm not gonna lie, I ain't. <laughs> because you can try to explain it to me back as a kid, I would never understand it. Because I thought it was Sub Zero, uh, Sub Zero brother, and a new side for like a whole. I thought all three of them were different people. <laughs> but Sub Zero dies and then comes back to avenge his death. Now, that's a good redemption arc. Well, not much redemption, but I get where you introduce somebody without just like. Oh, yeah, he's just back for round two of this tournament. 
Um, that, I think that's interesting. It's the own right. There's more to his story, too, but trying to fight and talking to his story is hard. I'm not sure. I didn't study his on top of my head. But I think we can all... You can, like, I want you to try to explain to them why, my, why she's my favorite. I want you to try. I mean, she's hot, first of all, and she's blue. <laughs> that's what I've kind of gotten over over the course of a few epi- of quite a few episodes now and a few months of knowing you. That's kind of mm-hmm. what I take when it comes to why is Katana <laughs> your number one. You're not wrong, but there's more to it, obviously. Okay, then I'm assuming it's because... How can I... Huh. You know, that's actually an interesting one, because I've never really understood 100% why. Because I yeah. like Katana, but... I don't know. She's not She's not even close to one of my favorites. I would say she's not even yeah. in my top 30. I mean, that's not, no, that, that's kind of weird, because there's not that many like characters who have had that much history as Katana, but... I don't know. Why exactly is she your favorite? <laughs> Apart from the so, first of all, first I'll be a liar and say it has nothing to do with the movies because I came out week. I came. I was born two thousand, not two thousand. What the hell? I I wish I was that young sometimes, but I can't drink. Um, I'm twenty one. Yes, I was born in nineteen ninety seven, and that's when the second movie came out. And don't don't judge me off of that. Cause I have nothing to do with that. But I screw. I'm just, I'm just gonna stop playing that. Cause this is I, this is my hard game. So I'm not I'm not gonna waste my time no more. Um. So I tell I anyone who's from the movie first and second one, well, most of the first one, I had I could idolize better. Cause hey, okay, so you're in MK4 MK Gold and in the first movie, I. Liked you a lot, pretty much. So if you're a Liu Kang, Sub Zero, Scorpion, um, Liu Kang, Sub Zero, Scorpion, Liu Kang, definitely. Uh, Sonya, Johnny, Raiden. Mm-hmm. You were in the movie. You were in the game. It was easier to connect with you guys, connect as a character. And then slowly, but, and I think that's why back then Sub Zero, Katana, and Liu Kang were my favorite people, and Jax. Um, that's from the second movie, but still. So I could relate to those guys. Other people I just saw, like, alright, these are characters I like every time now. Now, over time, I don't know much because I don't read, I don't like reading. But I like the dynamic of, uh, Sib and Rivalry, so I guess that's why I like the, um, Malia and Katana together. And then... I, at that point, I didn't know who Jade was because I didn't see Jade again, or for the first time, really, until uh, MK Deception. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, you're like a little trio right now, like your own little power three. Like this is nice. I like that. But I ain't really. That's before you actually start diving into the story, and I was doing it, but not doing it by age. Eight or ten. Like I said, I I love my parents to death, but I think they made a mistake by letting me do this. <laughs> but no, um, but that's just why I liked her in general, like over the years. But when you like someone like that over the years, you tend to want to learn more about them. And the only people I really did that with was Sub Zero and Katana, mostly because they're blue. Yes. Um, first of all, I'm not gang affiliated with nothing. Just Really like the color blue. Um, but on story mode wise, this you have somebody for ten thousand years, well, who doesn't age too? Keep that in mind. Who doesn't want to age? But uh, ten thousand years thinking someone's her father, that she has a sister, and that you're a princess of a realm, which which is the last one's kind of true, but. Then you find out all in one swift move that that's all I. That's devastating as fuck. But think about it, you grow. Let's let's say for twenty one years you grew up with your brother. You grew up with a twin brother, and then find out that they're not really. They're, they're not even. They're pretty much you, a copy version of you, 
and they're pretty much almost made to replace you. And your parents, and you are adopted as well, and they like that one better than you. Yeah, that's not 110 percent the case. That kind of story right there is one of the brilliant things about about Amkitu. You know, Katana is she has so much history to her. You know, as they mm-hmm. introduce her, there's already so much history behind her, and there's so many, so much great stuff in their in their future as well. So they already started off with a great amount of details about her story. So they could really only improve, and like that's. I, it, it might be think. that's yeah you would think, but I, I'm talking about like in the short term, you know. Uh, yeah, to go with that. Yeah, so if you look at MK9, for example, in my opinion, the biggest or the worst thing that they did was changing the whole Melina Katana relationship. You know, in the old one, as you mentioned, she believed that Melina was her twin sister. She believed that Melina was essentially, you know, just her blood relative. Whereas mm-hmm. in MK9, she goes down to the flesh pits and she finds Melina in a tube. So it's already completely different. So the whole thing, the whole idea of Melina being a creature that's been around for as long as Kitana just goes down the window. And that kind of takes away from the fact that Melina could have the prowess of a Kitana in battle. She could have the experience. Yeah. She could have the knowledge. She's basically just, you know, well, oh, it's a kind of, born kind of mentally. It kind of throws off the whole... Um, family tree thing too. Think about it. Um, other than the the skill and because keep in mind those three girls are all matched evenly. You mean her? They're all ten thousand. Melina. Yeah. They're all ten thousand years old. They're all Khan's tops assassin. Which I, mean, I honestly don't know why he didn't send them. Oh, royalty wise, but it's like I don't see why he didn't send them to your fighting tournament. Like those three probably would clean house. Absolutely. I mean, in my opinion, they kind of went with okay. This would be like Katana discovering Melina in the flesh pits would be a great scene, a real shocking scene for her personally as a character. Yeah. But they kind of sacrificed the story elements there to kind of make it look good on screen. So it's it, it really is a shame because I really really like the original the original storyline of her and Melina growing up together training together constantly it, it it added something to it whereas now they're just you know katana kind of just figured out she's a copy over and it takes a lot away from the relationship of the two it looks cool well, that's the, but the relationship the thing, suffers from it so there's three things i want to say real quick one i know long list me um one you have to you have to we're all trying to trash mk9 as much as we already have in the past um even though it's a reboot and it's good for the fans to see all the trilogy characters again, and you also have to keep in mind that that was really made for for the new fans to make bring new people in. So everyone who doesn't know Katana Melina are essentially the same char- are the same but different characters. That was like a huge plot twist to them. Like, whoa, that's crazy. Us, we know she's a clone, but it's like. She knows she's a clone now. And that's the thing, too. Like, and that falls in mind the next thing. I never read the comics, but I've gathered enough to... I never been able to read them because I never had them myself. Trust me, if, I, if someone wants to send me that, that would be great. But those are, like, impossible to find. But you take... Um, I'm not sure which one it's called. I think it, the comic was literally called Katana Molina. That's... They're very original, I gotta tell you that much. <laughs> they have their own ideas and everything when they come to these comics. Um, and it shows how, show everything that led up before the tournament. The first tournament. And Katana finds out about Melina that she's a clone. And Jack Connors literally raised her mind and re- well, no, she finds Melina as a clone. No, as her sister. And then she finds out that they're not really blood because Melina has Tarkar and Teeth, Katana does not. So, Shakar erased her mind and made her feel like, just made her, like, eased into it better. And as much as we might look at Shakar as an evil dick, um, you have to admit he is sort of a good dad. 
Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like... You in know, the old timeline. Yeah, it's kind of like Thanos in... Uh, in Ghidorah. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like a similar type of thing. I think they may have taken some inspiration from that. I'm, I'm not too sure, but it's interesting because, you know, of course, Shao Kahn, he basically took over her realm. He did take over her realm, but not basically. He actually did. And he kind of adopted her and raised her the way he would want her to be raised, but he does care about her. So that's... Yeah. It's an interesting little combo of I'm an evil tyrant and I still care about the person I'm in in my own way raising. So Yeah. It's just and he loves Lena things. too, but yeah. he knew his biggest fear, and I think someone like him, you he would fear nothing. His biggest fear was that Katana was going to find out the truth. I think she did. That's how. That's why everything happened. But if you pan over to to the next scene of that same comic while he's explaining to her everything um, about Melina. Melina's right there hearing the whole thing. She thought she was real too. So that thing, Katana and Melina have more depth to their story than you would think because Melina is disgusted with her mouth and stuff and she thinks she's a real person. Now she finds out that she's a pretty much fellow experiment of Katana. Yeah, and and, that's, and just, that's, that's just one of the... That breaks your heart. Yeah, this is one of the many examples in MK2 of a really great storyline. I mean, all for the most part, all these characters really, really, really have amazing stories. And it's just a shame that nowadays they, they aren't able to really create a character. Capture that fire like again. Game. Yeah, it's like you see Devorah. She's not that cool. Like her, her, her backstory isn't that interesting. You see Ferritor. There's really nothing there. They used to be when they would introduce the character. There was so much backstory. There was so much backstory to you immediately. As soon as you read it, you were like, "Okay, I can, I can not necessarily relate to this character, but I can, I can feel them. I can feel who they are." I can you feel, feel them in my life. Yeah, and it, it just it makes you want to play as them. Whereas now, yeah, a lot of these characters, their backstories are kind of bullshit, or it's not that interesting, or there's really not much. And it's it, it's just it's one of those things where you really realize. MK2 is a masterpiece of story, of lore. It's, it really is. Like you see Baraka's story, he's he's fighting for his own reasons. You know, he's he of course he's this brutal guy, but he he's fighting for his horde. You see all this stuff. This for his home. Like, yeah, for his home, for his for his people. There's just so much about it that's so much deeper than, and it just kind of hits you. Like you kind of relate in a weird way, not necessarily to what they're doing on screen, but the person that the characteristics of of these characters you can just kind of relate to it you can kind of feel what they were going with and that's just kind of, it, it's an amazing feat by by the writers to to have been able to do that and especially to think that it was it was in mk2 how many guys were actually working on the game because mk1 was three but mk no, mk1 was four, was four. And i think am i doubled or maybe even been the same it, yeah i think it was like one or two more people working on the game but there it was still such a small group of people and to be able to do such a big amount of things in the span of about a year, it, it, it's it's just insane. It it really is just insane. The, the the talent that was that was developing those games is just is it really is incredible. And I guess you could say you know we've covered kind of the story, we've covered the characters that we like the most. But from a gameplay perspective, now that you're kind of you've been you've been playing it for about thirty minutes now, you know, improvement wise from from MK One, what do you think is probably the biggest improvement that they had from a gameplay perspective? I guess the upgrade doesn't take as much as much life as it did. The game is still, like I said earlier, the game is still a bunch of button mashing, but it's still enjoyable even for the spectacle of seeing everything. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. I don't play MK1 and MK2 for the gameplay. I really don't. I play for the visuals, and I play for just nostalgia. But also, keep in mind, back then, I didn't want to, I didn't believe in reading. I still kind of don't. But now I can actually read and understand the stuff. I'm like, ah, oh. so that's what really happened. Like, hell, um, this is going to go more to MK3, but certain characters died, and I didn't know they died. I, I was like, well, where is this character at? But uh, I'm not going to get into the spoilers, but... But even from taking the 
taking Luke from taking from when Luke Cage beats Sing Song and Goro. Sub Zero dies by Scorpion, and Sonya and Kano get captured in our world. They were able to still, even with all those changes, they still roll a good game, a great game, honestly. And I think I'm in for the story. I'm in more coming for the story and the roster. Mm-hmm. At least the first first few games, I'm not in for from MK1 and MK2. Screw it. MK1 to MK9 and a half. I'm not in for the story. I'm not in for the uh, gameplay. I'm just not. I'm honest about that, though. You know, yeah, you kind of make a fair point there. I mean, I will say, and we, we've been pretty open about this, but our biggest thing about Mortal Kombat is our passion for the story, our passion for the characters. Gameplay comes second because we're just not that good at the game. At exactly. The but MKX in. This is we. This is this is kind of just showing how many flaws there are with the story. MKX is actually more interesting to play for the gameplay than it is for the story because MKX story is just kind of, it's out. It, it there's it's just so much of it just seems like it doesn't make sense. So yeah, yeah. So essentially, MKX is more the the gameplay is actually better, which is it just kind of goes to show you how much we didn't necessarily like the story because both of us are absolutely. 100% more interested in the story than the game itself because the gameplay itself excuse me because I'm shit like we played a few matches of the day I think you won two I won two but one of them was kind of a technicality because you had to go answer you had you were doing something in, in, during that second during that one fight so it doesn't really count but regardless like neither one of us is really particularly oh, I love how you take a, I love how you take a loss and say it doesn't count okay no no I took the win and say it didn't count I'm being nice to you I'm no you favor. okay it was when you were using this character. Out. Remember? Oh, keep in mind, you can't, you can't say that and make it seem like this is a legit fight. We were doing random select, literally. We were doing random select. You, put, you know, I'm going to go ahead and you hide the, I have more talent, you have more knowledge. <laughs> you put the you put the hidden cursors on, you throw it on, on random, and you just fight whoever you have. Add that with the... Um, um, add that with the fact that we have three. You have the equivalent of playing not only the entire roster because you have I have the entire roster, but also you have the chance. Yeah, if you want, there's if you get your your favorite character, you want to get the variation you like. Like I like Katana, but I can do Roll Storm. I'm better with Assassin. And that's what I get. Excuses, excuses, bro. Listen, all right. We'll, I will say this. We'll, we'll, we'll piggyback off one thing, though. Yeah, go ahead. Um, the you said that MKX didn't have a lot of interesting uh, characters. Mm-hmm. I want to tell you how many characters I played that were not in story mode or were not because of Ren Select. Cassie and there's one other one. No, that, 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 I can't count Trimmer because everyone played with Trimmer when they first. If you buy him, you got to play with him for a little bit. Um, there, I know there's one other character that I'm actually really interested in too. Crap, but that just shows the show like that. They even have many characters you really could like. Oh, I want to play with this person, or fleshed out that way. I knew from the beginning, like I want to play with Cassie because they. She, to be your face of the of the company right now, and that when we have face, I mean you for the people they show off, and that says a lot about the game too. You show off Sub Zero, Scorpion, Cassie, Devorah, Colocon, and Ferator. So those are your six you show use to be the face of the game. Now, out of those six, the only one I really thought I was going to play with, even my stick version, was just Cassie. The board didn't interest me, interest me at all. Um, Sub-Zero and Scorpion, I hate their, their default costumes. Ferritor, I didn't see myself playing with at all. I think that's everyone, yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt that MKX's roster was, uh, especially the new characters, was... Yeah, just just not really good, not good at all. 
I agree with you pretty much 100%. The only characters that were interested to me when it comes to the new characters were essentially Cassie Cage um, and Kotokan. And Kotokan was not that much, to be honest with you. But I, I like his look. I like the idea of him, but the execution was just was, wasn't very good. Um, but I guess if we, if we try to remain in theme when it comes to MK2, like, of course, now you're using Baraka. And that was based on me telling you to use Baraka. But you already, I'm assuming it's one of Sub-Zero or Katana, but if you had to choose, like, one character that you would want to beat my ass in with in, in MK2, who would it be? Well, now since I see how easy Baraka is to play with, I might pick Baraka now. Just keep chop chopping until game's over. I, think, I didn't realize how long, that thing is really long. It lasts for a while. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, when I, you know, because I wanted to beat MK2, and I was having the hardest time, because I think it's the only game in MK that I had never beaten before. And I was like, okay, listen, I gotta figure out a way that's gonna be not easy, but make my life a little bit easier without the fight Shao Kahn. And at the end of the day, you know, if you just sit in the corner, you sit, you literally crouch in the corner, and you keep doing Chop Chop. He will continue to walk into it because the AI is kind of broken. So you could just sit there and he will literally walk into it and you can't beat him that way. So that was that's how I beat MK2 for the very first time. So, I mean, Baraka is a pretty cheese character. He's pretty good. Yeah, but... Yeah, I agree with you there now. But I want to compare the that roster. I know this is a thing we're going to probably compare <laughs> in a few weeks. But compare um, the opening roster from MK uh, X to MK11 and nine too. Let's go over nine. Um, Cause I kind of still remember nine. Nine was Kung Lao, Sub Zero. Well, no, not Sub Zero. Wait, what is it? Was it either with Sub Zero or without Scorpion? I can't remember. But Sector, Johnny Cage, Molina. You mean the opening know trailer? It. Yeah. Well, for the like for their little game page um, mm -hmm. trailer, yeah. Yeah. I can't yeah. So we have those. Yeah. I know. I even know it was a six ray. Hey, but I know we had Sub Zero, Kung Lao, Johnny Cage, Melina, Six Tor, and Night Wolf. So it might have just been six. But. Yeah, so that's the first. That's the pretty good uh, opening roster, right? Kind of give you idea. Kind of give you hope for the roster, right? Absolutely, yeah. Then we already talked about MKX, which I mean, MKX, you didn't know what to expect, and once you finally did, it was underwhelming as hell. And then look at MK11. Um, and much, you know, we didn't like. Okay, at first, we thought we were gonna get other people instead, but even then, it's like. It's still a pretty good roster with pretty good gameplay. You have Scarlet, you have Baraka, you have Gears, you have Sub Zero, Scorpion, Rain, and Sonya. Yeah, I will say this. Um, I am still very nervous about the roster, but I would say that if they hadn't shown, if they hadn't announced Scarlet early on and Baraka, and they just put in like maybe so let's just say Liu Kang. And Johnny Cage, even though I do love Johnny Cage, but I'm saying like, if they played it that safe, then I would be a hell of a lot less interested, or I would be a hell of a lot less hyped up than I am right now because the fact that they they showed off Scarlet, you know, Cabal, quite you know, not not too long afterwards, and uh, you know, Baraka, it just kind of shows that they are they are kind of I don't know they're trying to do something a little bit different because Baraka. They've managed to make him really badass, and I'm happy about that. So I'm hoping that this is going to be much like MK9 in the sense that they took a lot of characters that weren't necessarily cool, like Striker, like even Baraka in some ways, you know, and, and even Nightwolf, and really make them characters that you're like, I want to play the hell out of these characters, even Cabal. You know, these are all characters that weren't necessarily, they were, they were cool in their own ways, but they weren't really iconic, but... In MK9, a lot of those characters really, they had a chance to shine, and people kind of fell in love with them. So I think that MK11 has the opportunity to do that, 
to a bigger extent with some of these characters, like especially like Scarlet. This is her very first time on our main roster. Yeah, actual, yeah. Yeah, like so. This is this is. Then your very first here. time, you're gonna be the face of it. Like, okay, yeah, yeah. feel yourself a little bit. Feel it, good. It's just great to see. It is really just great to see because it's a ball. It's I'm not gonna say it's like a necessarily like a huge risk by another realm, but it is a ballsy move throwing in a character that only people who are diehards who bought the DLC are going to have seen before. So it yeah. is in a lot and of you ways, heard a reaction too. Yeah, people were fucking nuts. So it in a lot of ways, this is kind of Scarlet is a in some ways a new character for a very very large portion of the player base, the non, you know, MK fanatics that are obsessed with the lore. You know, maybe a lot of them have maybe had the combat pass or something like that. But when they play her a few times, stuff like that. But they don't really know about Scarlet. They don't know that she does in in some ways have a deep history. So it's it's really interesting. You know, it's a great move by them, and I'm really like I said, I'm really happy that they that they did do that. But I guess all this stuff is kind of we can cover this more extensively on the on the on the next few days when we of course we talk about the m cast and uh, then to the combat cast episode um i guess we could try to stick around to mk2 a bit more um mm. as you were playing favorite earlier, ending? Hmm? sorry favorite ending or just go ahead yeah well, no, we'll I was, go I was ahead say, you know when you were when you were playing earlier i could hear in the background just the music of mk2 and that is arguably my favorite thing about mk2 is the music it just it's it fits the the tone of the game it fits everything about the game so perfectly it's dark it's brutal it's it's mysterious it's foreboding it's it, it's just a, it's an amazing soundtrack and in my opinion it's probably the best in Mortal Kombat history and probably my favorite in general of all of video game history so i just i just love the soundtrack like you know, when you first pop in the game, it sounds so dark. It sounds so in your face, and there's just—it's a beautiful thing about the game is the atmosphere of it. Everything about it, the arenas, everything just—it it is so amazing. You know, that's one of the best things about the game. And I don't know about you, but when it comes to presentation, whether it's graphics, whether it's music, whether it's slugs, what what exactly is when it comes to presentation your favorite thing? Um. I like just I love the music too, and I love how they keep the music throughout all the games too. In future references, but like right now I'm playing at the, at the Deadpool. I started figuring back up again. Playing the Deadpool, you're like this is actually some good music. It's mysterious, but you're like you can't help but just enjoy it still. Also, have I mentioned how much I love Johnny Cage and that punch? <laughs> I, I have honestly like. That is, what is easily one of my favorite moves of all time. Just, just to pull it off, like out of nowhere, especially with somebody who doesn't necessarily know that Johnny Cage does that type of shit. Like when somebody who doesn't know anything about Mortal Kombat, all of a sudden you punch him in the balls. You just, you don't really expect it. You know what I mean? Even Cassie Cage with your X-ray, and you just you make the the nuts explode, and you can actually. Oh yeah. It, it's there's something just awesome about that, right? Yeah, that was. I think I will pick Cassie Cage for the first time I play more Kombat X for somebody who never played before or never seen it, and that would be literally the I would pick that first character so I can do the X ray. You just let them do the first X ray. Yeah, well, I let them do the X ray first so they can feel like they're winning. Like, uh, yeah, then let me show you mine. And then you have to show them Cassie's, and you have to make sure they have a guy too so it works. But um. Yeah, it was just that was fucking crazy. Um, presentation of MK2, I love it still. The pictures, the arenas, everything about it is just yeah, you can't hate it. And they made a good point. Um, Bill made a good point earlier, saying that um, how the Back like in this day and age, um, well, not this day and age, and back in MK2 and all the ones before that, they would have their own little backgrounds, and how in MK not X, it was literally the most bland it's ever been. It looks super dull, and now it's like, yeah, I see why people like that much. 
But the things you, things I like, I didn't know I like until you know what you're missing until someone else points it out to you. Yeah, it's one of those things that you kind of take for granted, you know, like. Like you mentioned, in MKX, the character select screen is very boring. It's cool how, like, when you collect, when you select the character, they walk, they kind of walk out and stuff like that, and that's kind of cool. But the select screen from those games, and I know Deadly Alliance still had, you know, backgrounds for the Deception characters. Deception did too. Deception did too, right? And I think they stopped at Armageddon because yeah. there were so many characters. So it, it's one of those things that you kind of take for granted because you don't really pay attention to it, but when you really dissect it and you look at it closely. There was so many cool little aspects about those characters on the select screen. It's a shame that they did, they, they kind of got rid of that in some ways, and they kind of got lazy. But it looks like in MK and MK11, they're actually gonna be having a little bit more personality on the select screen as well. So that's very good to see. But yeah, I mean, let, let's just be honest. Like from from top to bottom, when it comes to purely not necessarily aesthetics because that would, that would imply graphics. Cause the graphics were, you know, still <laughs> still early '90s. Uh, but from a, f- a presentation point of view, whether it's music, select screen, the entire atmosphere of the game, I honestly think MK2 might be the very very best. Like, there's just something about MK2 that when you see it, it is completely, it's unmissable. You know for a fact it's MK2. Whereas some of the other games. They kind of blend in with each other, but MK2 is just so unique. It is so unique in my opinion. The music, it, I can't go on and off about the music. I just, I just love it so much. Like it's, I think that honestly, MK1 has a great soundtrack. It's iconic. MK3 has a pretty good soundtrack, and from then on, it's kind of just kind of downhill from there. But MK2, I think it's the only soundtrack that I can honestly go on YouTube. I can look MK2 soundtrack and I can listen from the start to finish the entire thing and just love every single second of it. Some of the other ones, there are a few tunes here there that I don't really love that much. But MK2, it is literally the best soundtrack, in my opinion, in video game history. It's it's just so amazing. It just it fits the game perfectly. It fits everything so perfectly. So the presentation, in my opinion, for MK2 is pretty much as good as it can possibly get. Absolutely top notch and if you haven't listened to the soundtrack if you're maybe just kind of getting yourself in a little Mortal Kombat a little bit and you're maybe you know just thinking about MK11 you maybe only paid attention to you know some of the more recent games definitely at the very least if you're not going to play MK2 go and listen to the soundtrack listen from the very opening song the opening tune to the last because you will not regret it 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 is phenomenal absolutely phenomenal I give you that and probably will cause I I've never really sat down and listened to all those songs. Then we got to do it. Not... We got to. Oh yeah. It's I agree too. Things. Now it's like watching the movie. We kind of just need to do this. Yeah, we've been talking about doing it. It's like this, we make a lot of lists of stuff we're gonna have to do, but we just never do it. Well, I not mean, purposely, just it's just, it's just that Mortal Kombat. There's so much around it, you know. There's so many games. There's so there's the movies, of course. There's the TV shows. There's, there's so many. Yeah. Yeah. There's just so much you can do. Maybe she just left it. There's a movie. I think we should just left it. There's so many games and there's a movie and left it like that. Yeah, we shouldn't send movies. We should just mo- movie because MK. And then no TV shows never games. existed, but Conquest. Yeah. So I mean. And just leave it at that. There's just so much though, man. If you really think about, it, there's so much Mortal Kombat stuff out there between comics. Oh, and trust games. me, I know. I've combed through all of it. So eventually, every we'll hour, we will eventually get to all of it. It's just, it's gonna take some time. You know, life gets in the way, a lot of stuff. But, dude, more, like Mortal yeah. Kombat, honestly, like hearing you, I'm not even playing it, but hearing you playing it in the background, it's, it's just, it's such a great game. Like, it is really a phenomenal game, story wise, arguably the best in the series. Gameplay wise, for the time, really, really solid. Um, presentation, like I said, just top notch. Roster wise, phenomenal, and it's just all in all, man. It's a really great game. Like, I think we kind of covered everything, but um, because MK3 yeah. I think it's gonna be pretty interesting because MK3 there's a lot of stuff to cover, a, a much bigger roster without a doubt about that. Um, arguably in some ways better, of course, gameplay wise. The game I would say that the gameplay in MK3 is more fun without a doubt. It's a lot quicker, more combos, of course. But of course, Here's the, MK2 was... I, think, I know I told you this before, yeah, too, but you can't say 
And then if you say, well, the next game is obviously is better, like, obviously it's going to be better. It's the, uh, yes and no. Because you know, I mean, I don't, I know what you mean there, but at the same time, I taking a game from MK1 and 2, which are really great, don't get me wrong, but not only do you have more story to go with it, but you actually have a fighting system for once. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> which helps. Uh, which is, on one some way, balanced for its time. But that also like goes to... Yeah, like people say, oh, I love MKX, like the best game ever. This is when it first came out, obviously. But it's like, I mean, look what you have. Before. You say that about every game. Like, like me going from MK1 playing MKX, like, oh, this game is so much better than MK1. Like, yeah, it has 20 years of experience to go with it. Well, I mean, that's just that's just kind of the way things are. But, like, like I was always saying, yeah. as I was kind of interrupting... And I apologize for that, but I was gonna kind of saying, you know, like, of course, as time go, as time goes on, the games will get better from a technical point yeah. of view. Like MKX, it's not even. There's just there's nowhere, no way you can possibly compare MK1's gameplay to MKX's. But at the same You'd time, you'd be surprised. Yeah, well, uh, both are trash <laughs> from a gameplay perspective. No, I'm just kidding. MKX is actually really, really fun gameplay. But at least for me, because I'm not you know deep into the fighting game stuff, so I just kind of play it. I play kind of each game the same way. So MKX is just so fast that it just kind of fits and just kind of feels fun. But at the same time, you know, like MK2, for example, compared to MKX, even though the gameplay in MK2 is technically a lot lower quality, I'm kind of more interested in playing MK2 because of everything that surrounds it than playing MKX. So yes, the games are technically, from a gameplay perspective, better. They are still, the old games are, you know, they they still kind of hold their own, which is pretty incredible considering it's been oh, yeah. 25 years since MK2 came, uh, came out. Um, okay. I do oh, want to yeah, ask you years. something. Yeah, I do want to ask you something before we kind of wrap this up. Um, in terms of from best to worst, I'm not, I'm not going to ask you your entire list, but where more or less do you class, do you, do you list MK2? in your favorite MK games of all time? Where would you more or less put it in your list? Yeah. Well, we technically have... Technically, we have... Of course, what, only, only counting, sorry, 11 the, games? the main games. The main games. Okay. So, everything between everything between 1 and 10 minus DC? No, DC counts. It's still technically okay. part of the main series. Technically, that is more from like eight two, by the way. Exactly, <laughs> it is official. So. Uh, yeah, but no, I would definitely rank it as. Oh, we didn't ask that question last week either. I just realized. But um, I would rank it definitely maybe top five at least. Okay. Yeah. Don't wrong. The reason why the reason why I don't say like top three or anything like that because I still never beat the game, so I don't appreciate it as much. Mm-hmm. But in top five, I was just saying that right now, top of my head. I think if I actually were able to beat the whole game and actually embellish in that for once, um, I think it might be a little higher. And maybe it might eventually will if I actually can beat it. But, yeah, it's... Yeah, it's a good game. Yeah, definitely. Well, what about you? Nah, like I've said, you know, I've I actually done a list like my my listing my games from now, from from least favorite to favorite. I had number one Deception, which kind of alternates between that and MK9, um, and I have MK2 at number three. You know, it's just because MK2 is one of those games that you don't necessarily play it often because, of course, the gameplay is what it is. It's still 1990, 1994, so the year I was you know literally I was, the year I was born, so it it still is what it is. But if you play it every once in a while, like once a year or every couple, you know, every like twice a year or something like that, you can really appreciate it for what it is. It's literally a prime example of how lore, story, can affect the game. Yeah, it can, it can really make game 
a hundred thousand times better than gameplay can. Like gameplay, it's cool. Like even in 2019, like gameplay is really really cool. Like you take a game like Red Dead Redemption for example. Okay, I've seen a lot of people compare Red Dead Redemption 2 to Red Dead Redemption 1 and really say that Red Dead Redemption 1 is actually better because gameplay wise it's not as good as Red Dead Redemption 2. But let me tell you the story in Red Dead Redemption 1, it it it, it was a bit better. It was a bit better. So you know gameplay as cool as it can be, it isn't necessarily the most important thing and that's why i think that mk2 has arguably above every other game in the entire series is lore it is the lore like mk2 it is in my opinion from a story point of view absolutely perfect absolutely perfect so that's one of the reasons why i have it so high up you know and mk2 and let me know in the comment section down below guys let us know what you kind of think of the game like where would you rank it among of course, the top, the, the 10 MK games that we've had so far. MK11, it might be higher, might be lower. We have, we don't know yet. But among the 10 games that we have seen so far, where would you rank it? But I just think that it's undeniable. Because you know, take off, take off Challenge Mocks and Mythologies. Of course. And Special Forces. Special Forces shouldn't even count. But it does. Special Forces shouldn't exist, apparently. Uh, I mean, I've I've never played it, so it doesn't exist for me. <laughs> kind of like Darius, you have to use. I've never played it, so it doesn't. They use them, they only exist. <laughs> of course, we have to get the random Darius moment in every single episode. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be us without it. Well, it wouldn't be me, I guess, without it. And fucking mm -hmm. Dairu, fucking Sue how? Oh, dude, what the what what? Oh. I'm starting. I'm I'm breaking down. I might actually cry right now. I might actually fucking cry right now just thinking about the idea of Suhao, Dairu, and Darius being the future of Mortal Kombat somehow. Just just imagine if some kind of alternate universe, Dairu, Suhao, and Darius became the most popular Mortal Kombat characters, surpassing Scorpion, uh, Sub Zero, and I don't know. Throw in, throw in. I guess we could say who Melina or something like that, and. All of a sudden, those three are the face of more... Oh, dude, I might actually cry. Anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. I was actually mentally breaking down. Um, yeah, MK2, like, any final thoughts? Uh, great game. Game from my best characters, favorite characters at least. Also, regardless of what you, someone might think, we wouldn't have the story, have anything, really, if it wasn't for MK2. So, that's all I have to say. Yep, and I agree 100%. MK2 was, MK1 was a great game, but MK2 was where it really exploded into the amazing, just the amazing Mortal Kombat series we know. You know, MK1 was a great start, but yep. MK2 was where it really became, it really kind of blossomed. Momentum came yeah, in. Exactly. They could. They could have. They could have fucked up MK2. Let me tell you. They could have made so many mistakes with MK2. They could have just kind of stuck stuck to what they did in MK1. Just kind of left it the same. Added a couple characters and called it a new game. They could have even not really cared much about the story. But let me tell you, they did. They did the exact opposite. They expanded on every single aspect of MK1. Made it so much better. Added added other allies. Added a bunch of new characters. They added. So much more, more cool things to the game and made it a phenomenal piece of art, really, for the entire world to joy over for essentially 25 years now. So hats off to Midway back then. Hats off to the five or six guys who developed that game. And thank you so much, really, because without that, without that game, without them, we wouldn't be talking about this game, really. We wouldn't be talking about this series in 2019. That's so, very true. I guess... uh that's kind of a great way to end it, you know, giving props to Midway, Ed Boon, of course, John Tobias, all those guys, all the guys who <laughs> made this game what it is, made this series what it is, so thank you so much, guys, and uh, if you enjoyed the, the podcast, definitely let us, you know, let us know in the comments, hit the like button, uh, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that place, I'll leave that stuff all in the link in the description down below alongside our personal um, our personal tag so if you want to contact us privately you can do that as well um, let us know in the comments whatever you would like us to change whatever you'd like us to talk about 
you know, anything you would like us to improve, you know, just let us know every, all your thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode. <coughs> Good night, guys. <laughs>